Sveiki gyvi, jų žiūrite Delfi TV laidą sportinę formą. Šiandien jūsų dėmesiu į išskirtinis Delfi sporto žurnalisto Mindaugo Augušio interviu su Modestu Bukausku. Baltų gladiatorius, pirmasis Lietuvoje gimės kovotojas, trumfavęs prestižinėje UFC organizacijoje. Obviously, I want. I was very looking forward to have my American debut, and then um, that got cancelled, obviously due to this whole pandemic situation. And then, uh, and then, yeah. But luckily, I got a quick turnaround. I got a very good management team. You know, they they got me a fight pretty much. Uh, like I said, you know, a couple months later, which was amazing on like Fight Island, which is the most historic event, you know, in the UFC. Um, especially during like such a crazy, you know, a stressful time for everyone in the world. Uh, but they, they they literally took such good care of us. I mean, we had to take about five different uh, uh, COVID tests. We had to be quarantined in our rooms uh, before, like in London for, for two days before we flo flew out to Abu Dhabi. And then once we got tested again, so we got tested already three times. And then we had to uh, get quarantined in Abu Dhabi for another two additional two days. And then we were allowed to go uh, and do what we wanted. So it's very strict, very... Uh, you know, like very well organized, you know, the UFC, they made sure that they left no stone unturned. They made sure that they done everything properly. And uh, yeah, like I said, they took care of us really well. So uh, yeah, I'm very glad that um, with all the testing still and, you know, you know, being cooped up in your room for two days in London, that was a bit you know, I was there on my own, and it, but when I was in Abu Dhabi, I was in a room with my dad, who's also my head coach. So it was it was amazing. You know, for the two days that I was in quarantine, I was still able to train properly and, and stuff like that, even though we were just in the hotel room. But like I say, the whole experience was uh, was amazing, and I couldn't have had it any other way. So about two weeks before the fight, I had a. Uh, I had a bit of a knee injury, so I had bursitis, which is like an inflammation in your knee, and like my knee literally looked like a watermelon. And then uh, uh, it then got like a little bit infected when I was out on the fight island as well, like a couple of days before the fight. So you know, I was sort of battling that, like leading up to the fight and stuff like that. We managed to get it down quite a lot and like you know reduce the swelling and stuff, uh, but obviously after the fight you know it sort of flared up quite a bit and you know and then everything was swollen but already now everything's starting to heal up very well uh, my knee's coming back to normal I'll give it another week or whatever and, and my knee should be back back to how it was before but it was just annoying because obviously I was trying to nurse this injury while still training and still trying to get ready for a fight and cut weight and and stuff like that so it was annoying but at the end of the day you know still got the job done and now it's good i can take a little bit of a rest to, to let it uh, let it heal and get ready for uh, for uh, training again we found out quite close to the fight but um at the end of the day i knew even when i heard that you know my opponent pulled out i, I had no worries because if, it, if I would have been still fighting for Cage Warriors, I probably would have been worried, thinking, OK, this fight may not have happened. But I knew with the UFC, there's so many guys who are staying ready, staying sharp and training that there was going to be someone that was going to step up to the plate and, and, and come and fight. So, you know, there, there was no there was no real worry for me. I knew that they were going to find me an opponent. And, you know, they ended up finding me an even tougher opponent. But at the same time, I, I love that. I love having challenges. I love embracing like pressure situations or, or or things where not supposed to go because it makes me it makes me feel like I'm building on my character and building on on my on my athletic ability so the fact that I, I got the new opponent and everything it was actually a bit of a blessing in disguise because you know I think it definitely raised my stock even higher The good thing is that all the stuff that I've been training, which was, you know, we've done a lot of anti grappling stuff and a lot of anti wrestling. My striking, I'm always trying to improve and work on it, anyways, even though that's like my main thing. Um, the good thing is all that anti wrestling and all that anti grappling just played into the new opponent exactly how how I wanted it to, uh, because 
at the end of the day, I, I knew that if he would strike with me, I'm absolutely fine to do that. And all I need to do is just to negate or stop all the grappling stuff that he had on his side because he's a bit more of an all-rounded opponent. But, you know, like I say, luckily in the fight, you know, it ended up being more of a striking exchange anyways, which is what more what I wanted anyways. So really nothing much changed. We kept it exactly the same. We kept exactly the same strategy and exactly the same game plan. And I think doesn't matter who the opponent would have been I think we'd have, we would have realistically kept the same game plan because we know that our strength is the striking which is where we want to keep it so had the guy wanted to grapple with us or anything like that we would have been absolutely ready for that so mm -hmm. yeah I was, um, doesn't matter who the opponent is uh, you know you've always got to, to um, you've always got to um, adapt and overcome so like I say I'm, I'm really uh, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, everything played out the way it did It's not necessarily my favourite, but it's just what's been presented to me. Like, a lot of guys, you know, they either don't want to strike or they're losing the exchange. I mean, listen, in our exchanges with uh, Mihalidis, we were quite even. So maybe it was a tactic of theirs to then, OK, let's get the takedown to solidify the round. Um, with a lot of guys, they just end up going to try and take me down because they don't want to stand up. And then it's just presented to me. A lot of guys don't normally throw those strikes, so they're not expecting it. Like, if you saw in the video against Mihalidis, I had the overhook and an underhook. I could have easily just said, I'm going to stop the takedown and go to the next round. But my dad was shouting in the corner, Modestus, elbows, elbows, elbows. And listen, we've been practicing those strikes. We know where the target areas are. We, 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 we've been shown where they have to be. So we know exactly where to hit and where to hit to make it hurt um, at, within the legal boundaries and stuff like that. So... You know, as soon as I saw it, I, like I said, I was ready to just stop the takedown. I had the perfect position to stop the takedown, but I'm a finisher. I want to go and finish, guys. And there's 10 seconds left. So, obviously, my dad's showing elbows. I'm going to go for it as much as possible. So, it's not necessarily my, like, favorite move, but I guess, you know, um, I don't want guys to, to take me down. So, this is the way I'm going to stop them from taking mm. me down. People don't know about my wrestling yet. They don't know about my jiu-jitsu yet. Like, I think there's a lot of talk about me, yeah, you know, being a good striker, but I've just not decided to go for my takedowns myself. I've, in a fight, you're always going to do the things that you're 100% the best at and the most confident at. And for me, it's the striking and the takedown defense. A lot of people may say, oh, yeah, well, he got taken down a lot in his last couple of fights and this and that, but okay, what did they achieve? Absolutely nothing. And the point is, it's a, it takes a lot of wrestling knowledge to even just get back up to your feet. So there's a lot of things that, you know, that are a little bit different in MMA. And I feel like I haven't had the, again, I haven't had the chance to really show it too much. And listen, there'll come a time where I'm going to be pushing people back, taking them down and mauling them on the floor. Uh, it's just a case of just building, uh, building the confidence, been building this, because I have the skill set, I have the tools there. Like I do a lot of freestyle wrestling. Like, you know, I, I, I use some of my Sambo techniques and stuff like that, but I've just not been given those opportunities in a fight. And, um, and like I say, now I'm going to start incorporating that even more. And, you know, who knows, you might see me, you know, take, take guys down and, and start doing damage there. But like I say, I'm very confident in all my skill sets and, uh, uh, I'm just going to keep working on it, keeping improving on it. MMA is a completely different game. And I think as well, you know, for me to get the best out of myself, I've got to go towards my strengths, you know. So, um, yeah, like I say, there, there, there will be times when I do it. Um, who knows if it, it may not be in the second fight or whatever. But uh, look, at the end of the day, I'm always trying to become a better mar mixed martial artist. So, um, yeah, you will definitely see in the fights that come forth now uh, that the skill set will just be keeping on adding and improving. At the minute, uh, my manager obviously just wants me to sort of recover and heal. So another week of sort of recovery and I'll be back into training, which means I'm going to be back, you know, like normal and stuff like that. Um, I reckon there's, I think there's another fight island coming up either in September or October. I mean, we're, we're not 100% sure when, but I'm going to try and get on one of those cards. I mean, listen, I've just, I've just come out with a, you know, a performance bonus winning uh, performance. So obviously... I'm be, I'll be looking to get straight back in there because, like I say, I'm in shape. I'm feeling good. You know, I'm going to be back in training straight away from next week. So, um, 
yeah, man. Um, and who they're going to give me, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not so sure. But look, at the end of the day, whoever they put in front of me, I'm always going to find the solutions of how to beat them. And and my skill set is going to show out even more every single fight. And you know, even going into a fight 100% healthy is going to make me even more dangerous for my opponents. So. Uh, yeah, there's no real step yet, but we're looking at, you know, September, October, whenever they have the next Fight Island events up. There's actually two which I, I do admire and, and I think are really good athletes. So uh, one that, you know, fought against Terence uh, Crawford for the world yeah. title boxing, Kavialauskas. Uh, he's, he's an absolutely amazing uh, athlete and like the way that he came into that fight, you know, again, being the underdog and stuff like that. And, you know, he put on a really good performance against a top level boxer. So, you know, again, for, for, for us to produce athletes from such a small country and stuff like that, you know, we're, we're doing a real good thing. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a guy that I definitely look up to in the boxing side. And also uh, Mazla uh, Yeah, He's a very good fighter. I mean, I know he's had MMA fights as well before. He's doing a lot better now on the kickboxing side, but those two athletes have definitely been very uh, inspirational uh, for me because you know they're, they're they're breaking through and they're showing like you know that we that we are dangerous on the world stage and that we can compete with these top level athletes and you know I hope to do the same now in in the MMA world you know fighting in the UFC and stuff like that and not only that obviously my dad's been a massive inspiration to me as well you know him him doing so well back in the day even before MMA was even here so uh, yeah man like the, those are the sort of the Lithuanian athletes that I definitely look up to. My mum was born in Vilnius and my dad was born in Kronos. Uh, my dad was actually one of the top 10 swimmers uh, in the country at one point. And uh, he actually wanted to go to the Olympics uh, um, or he wanted to try and get to that point. Um, but unfortunately, I think that due to some sort of complication, he wasn't able to fill out that dream. And then he actually got enlisted by the Soviet Army for two years. And then uh, during that time, I think that's when he sort of found his love for, for, for martial arts and combat sports and found that he's quite good at it. Um, he also got his black belt in karate and then he sort of incorporated the sambo and stuff like that. And then he started competing himself and became one of the top 10 fighters in, in, in Lithuania and stuff like that. Um, my mum, she, she was a bit more of an artistic sort of woman. She, you know, she played piano and stuff like that. And, you know, she, she wanted to do something like sort of artistic. So she, she done hairdressing and then she started working her way up the ladder there. And then, you know, my dad was very successful. You know, we had a, we had a nice family and stuff like that. I was born in Kalepada. Uh, and then, you know, at three years old, we sort of, we sort of looking for different opportunities. And, um, you know, my parents decided the best move would be to try and come to London. Um, and, you know, really, and it, it has been, you know, it's been a good thing because, you know, it, it meant that uh, I would, you know, I've become very well spoken in English and stuff like that, which is obviously very important in the world. And, uh, you know, it's, it's helped my parents out a lot and it's given me a lot of opportunities. It's helped me to go out to America for school. It's helped me to, to you know, like, like do certain things. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. At the same time, though, I mean, listen, everyone hears me speak and, you know, they hear, they hear the British accent and this and that. And, and, and yeah, you know, is, is that London accent? It's not Eastern yeah, European. For yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. So everyone everyone's kind of confused, like. You know, he's got a Lithuanian name, but, you know, he's, he's got a, a, an English accent. But obviously, I really, like, value my heritage from Lithuania. That's why I always bring the flag out with me. Um, it really means a lot to me. I mean, even the t tattoo that I have on my left arm has got all words in Lithuanian. Um, so, uh, Pasi Oh, um, yeah. So, Sacrifice. Yeah, Tikeyamas. Mele. I think Milo and uh, Shema. So oh. stuff that means stuff that means a lot to me. Uh, stuff that I like, you know, I sort of value quite highly. Um, but yeah, man, like I said, I've been I've been trying to work on my Lithuanian a little bit and and stuff like that at home. Um, you know, in between like the training, you know, during quarantine. So I'm starting to understand it now a lot better. I can read it now. I can, you know, with the accents and stuff like that. It's just a case of I just got to just get down and study it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's I've sort of been like you, you're focusing on training focusing on this doing that and you know I've, I've i've not been able to do it but my dad's been helping me out a lot and you know answering people so now i'm trying to get back into it in terms of just like you know learning how to speak it properly so hopefully one of the next interviews we'll be able to have a bit more of a lithuanian conversation <laughs> as opposed to an english yeah. one
I, I, I honestly like I represent Lithuania to the to the fullest. Like I, I was born there. Like you know, I've, I lived there for three years as well, and I've still I've still been back there to visit family and stuff. So you know, it is it is a very big part of me. And uh, um, like I say, that to, to be the first Lithuanian uh, male to sign with the UFC, it was a big deal for me, and also to win. So now I'm 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 hoping I can pave the way for more Lithuanians to get to the UFC and and uh, and do their thing. So. Uh, yeah, and, and like I say, I'll, I'll give massive credit to mom and dad for bringing me up the way I did and giving me all the opportunities that I needed to, to go out and achieve things. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a crazy journey. Every time I come back to Lithuania, like every time I've been back to see family, if there's something about it that just feels like home. Like, you know, although, yeah, living in London and stuff like that, you know, obviously that, that feels like home, like I'm, I'm very used to it. But every time I come back to Lithuania, there's something about it that that feels like familiar. And like, you know, like obviously from when I was there, when I was a kid and stuff like that, I think it it has a very homey feel to it. I mean, I don't have to I've got a load of pictures like, you know, some of the old albums of the of the family and stuff like that, but not necessarily like many like sort of. Uh, deep like sort of um, memories I guess it was just a very long time ago I find, I find it very hard to remember but all, anytime I look at photos and I look at pictures of the stuff that uh, we used to do over there it always brings back like an, a, a feeling like I, I don't know what it is I don't know how to explain it but it gives me like a feeling of uh, something familiar you know and, 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 and like I say every time I go over there I really do feel like it's home and, and uh, I, I'm definitely now you know in between fights I'm definitely going to try and visit a lot more My passport is uh, Lithuanian, so I'm, I, I don't actually have a uh, British citizenship. I'm really? a Lithuanian citizen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, at some point, I'll probably look look, 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 look to get something like that, uh, but as it stands, I've got a Lithuanian passport. So, uh, yeah, obviously, with all the stuff going on in the government, you know, who knows how everything will turn out, but... Uh, yeah, like I say, so the, that that's again how you know, like proper. I'm a proper Lithuanian. I've got even got the passport and everything. You know, I took a little bit of a break from martial arts. Just you know, my parents want me to try and pursue other sports, so I tried playing other things, and then I played basketball, and I seemed to have a little bit of a talent for it. You know, I had I had like a knack for it. I, I like it's something that I picked up quite quickly. I, I improved quite quickly. And then uh, it came to the uh, to the point where um, I was playing for quite a good team in London, um, and you know, after that, um, we sent some tapes over to to a school in in America where one of my coaches he went there when he was younger, and then um, in Louisiana, and then after that, they pretty much said, yeah, this guy is good, you know, let, let, let's bring him over. And then you know, I went to school there for two years. The first year I couldn't play. But then the second year I was eligible to play, and um, yeah, man, like I, I you know, I've, I've got loads of pictures from when I played back in the day and stuff like that uh, out in America. And you know, I was just trying to, like every basketball player's dream is to go out and you know be able to play as a professional, play in Europe, play in America, or go to a Division One college and stuff like that. So that was my dream for the longest time. And then you know, I got like a D- Division Three school looking at me, but it wasn't like anything to to get me to where I wanted to be in terms of basketball so I and the team that I played for I had to play every position as opposed to just specifically playing a point guard or a shooting guard so it was very you know having to play play then center and 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 power forward and stuff like that I'm too small for those positions and you know obviously uh, I was talented but you know not enough to play at that highest level which is understandable so you know, then when the conversation when I was 18 came about, you know, what what, what do we want to do? Uh, I decided, you know, uh, to, you know, my dad talked to me and it was very easy to say, listen, let's go back. Let's 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 uh, let's train the martial arts again and let's try and uh, chase this UFC dream, which we've now achieved. So I feel like everything played hand in hand. The fact that I played basketball, I even played American football out there. It all just sort of you know, accumulated together and it helped me to become more athletic and more well prepared uh, for everything that I have now in MMA. So I trained for about three years, four years. uh, And so I turned pro after about, after three years. So I had an amateur record of seven and one. 
Then I turned pro when I was 21. And then when, when like after my first pro fight that I won, uh, which was also against another Lithuanian, funnily enough, um, I then went to Albuquerque. And John John was, wasn't there at that time. I actually trained mainly with Arlovsky. And then um, the second time I went was when I was 22. And then that was when I met John Jones. And that was after I was 4 and 0 as a pro. And um, then, yeah, uh, it was absolutely amazing experience. Like I say, to be able to train with the greatest of all time and, you know, sparring with him every single day, talking to him and, you know, uh, having him sort of praise me and stuff like that. And it, it, was, it, was, it was nice. It showed me that someday I'll be able to compete with the highest level. You know, he's an amazing athlete and you can see why he smashes everyone because he's extremely <laughs> But um, it was amazing for me, you know, just being able to have those rounds, to have that experience. I feel like there was a lot of things that were probably not right uh, that needed to be changed. I changed a lot of things. You know, I changed, uh, I changed my training. I was overtrained, uh, which, you know, eventually led to a, a serious knee injury. I, you know, I, I needed to tone down and, and, and be more worried about quality as opposed to quantity in terms of my training. Um, I had to worry uh, about my nutrition. I was in a, I was in the wrong weight class. I needed to be in a high weight class. I was in middleweight. I needed to be a light heavyweight. I had to change up my nutrition. Um, I had to change up a lot of things that, you know, that, especially training wise, that I needed to, to tweak to get better. But one main thing was uh, um, I needed to get some aggression. I, need, I was too much of an athlete, too much of a sportsman. I needed to be a bit of a, an aggressor, a, a vicious fighter as opposed to a, a nice guy. Oh, yeah, re listen, respect them as much as you want before and after the fight. But when it's in the fight, you've got to be a killer. You've got to want to go out and hurt the guy. Otherwise, they're going to do the same to you. And one thing that brought that, vi that ferocious side out of me was the boxing sparring. Uh, that was one big thing. I, I've sparred with some of the best boxers in London, and it really, you know it really highlighted that I've got the skill set, but I didn't have the mind. So that, re you know, when you're going into boxing gym, the guys are literally trying to take your head off. It makes you have to get into that fight scenario and really think like, they ain't trying to play with me. They're trying to hurt me. I've got to do the same for them. So a lot of things I changed, which then got me to, you know, to, to the level where I am today. That, that was where it all started. That was the root of it. And it was unfortunate. That I think afterwards then, I, you know, I, uh, I had a serious knee injury, a meniscus tear. I lost a sponsor, which was helping me to train full time. So I literally had no money. I had, uh, I had no uh, no job. Uh, I just split up with a long time girlfriend. I had a serious knee injury. There was times like that where literally everyone left me. Like everyone left my side. Like everyone was. I was a big. There was a massive hype, and then everyone just thought, ah, throw him out in the gutter now. Do you know? So, and the only people that were there were the people that were really close to me, including my dad and, and, and a couple of other close people that will always be there for me. And my dad was always telling me, he said, listen, you're going to be a world champion one day. Don't let this affect you. You're going to come back. I mean, there'll be times where I was like crying in my room trying to figure out like, what the hell am I going to do? But, you know, and, and, and I got very depressed, but, you know, slowly things just started brightening up. I got my operation on my leg. I managed to find a job. I did a course and stuff like that. So things slowly, I made little victories, little victories that then eventually led to me going on a massive win streak. And like I say, it, it, I'm very thankful for those experiences because it just makes me tougher in the mind. I feel like nothing can break me now. I've had so much adversity that now I feel like any other adversity is a walk in the park or it's something that I know I'll be able to handle. So I needed those experiences to make me who I am today. Because uh, now I'm on a seven fight win streak, and believe me, it ain't going to end here. I'm going to keep winning, and I'm going to keep rising up towards the top uh, with all the experiences that I had. Uh, I don't want to go back to those dark times, so I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I don't. I've had about six yesterday, back to back, oh my God. From about seven o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I've had another two today. This is my third. I've got another free tomorrow and it, you just keep going. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I've got to, this is also part of the job. You know, I've got to give back and, and tell people, uh, uh, you know, about all these things and about the story and stuff like that. And, I'm, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's, 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 it's part of it. And, I, and, you know, I like doing it. I like talking to different people and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a lot of interviews, a lot of work. But again uh i i enjoy doing it because you know th this is what i want to do like i want to be in the spotlight i want to be that guy being talked about 
I want to go and put on performances. And I understand that this is just part of the business. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's how I roll. And in one of those recent interviews, you talked about drinking vodka with, with your dad. Uh, is uh, Conor McGregor type of uh, good public relations you are trying to create, like, imagine? Uh, yeah. Image for yeah, public. well, yeah, it's just uh, in that interview, I think I, I, I was basically saying, like, I, I don't know if he asked like, how I would celebrate or, or, or something like that. But yeah, no, of course. I mean, listen, uh, you know, these these situ these uh, moments, you know, like there's only going to be like, you know, it's only going to be for like the next 10 years. So we've got to make the most of every single moment. So, of course, you know, after a fight, I'm going to have a, you know, a couple of shots here and there with my dad and, and, and stuff like that and with my close people. I think there's like a very old bottle of whiskey that he hasn't opened that he's just waiting just to... To, to, to pop and uh, you know like, like, like I say just for this particular victory and, and as well for winning 50 G's we, we've yet to do that but we're going to do that probably within the next couple of days and then when I get back into training then obviously everything gets ramped back up to normal but yeah now of course man I mean listen I'm, I'm a guy I'm an av uh, like I'm a normal guy like I'm a fighter but you know there, there's another side to me you know I like going out I like partying I like doing crazy things so, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, that's just me and that's my personality. And like I say, I'm, I'm happy to show that out to people.